This is D23 Inside Disney. We are going to take you through some of the best Disney stories of the week, get you an inside look at the people behind the magic of Disney. I'm Candace from Radio Disney. I'm Sherry from Oh My Disney. And I'm Jeffrey from D23. And we're the hosts that will take you inside Disney. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. I'm still very jet lagged, so I apologize if I'm... uh... A little lower energy today, but hearing you guys gives me more <laughs> adrenaline, that is for sure. The churro sugar has drained out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately. But before we dive into everything, it was announced that Radio Disney is going to be closing its operations next year. And Candace, I know I speak for Sherry, our producers, and all our listeners when I say it is amazing working with you. And we are looking forward to spending the coming weeks with you. Thank you. Me too. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like I learn so much from you every week. You're such a pro. (laughs) Uh, Well, thanks. I'm happy to be here. Radio Disney has impacted so many kids and families for so long. It's sad, but the legacy will live on and so will the magic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. And Sherry, you just celebrated a big birthday. I did. I'm 30 now. Woohoo. Oh welcome, my gosh. Welcome. <laughs> I still feel 12. I think <laughs> it's just the way I am. But yeah, nope. I am in my 30s. And I'm so far, you know, a couple days in, I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. Yes. I feel like the longer you're with the company, the younger you get. So yeah, it's kind of perfect, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And did you bring it in with Taylor Swift? Okay, yes, I did ring it in with Taylor Swift. I ring in basically every day of the year with Taylor Swift. (laughs) But this birthday has been especially Swifty and wonderful because of Folklore, the Long Pond Studio Sessions streaming on Disney+. Plus. Y'all, it is just an absolute masterpiece. (laughs) I highly recommend watching it curled up on the couch with your cocoa, with your fuzzy socks on, with your Christmas tree lights, with your holiday decorations, and just completely zeroing in on the moment. It's just fabulous. Ooh. Yes. Candace, what, what have you been watching? Well, I did get to interview Sean Mendez about his wow. new album. And yeah, right? Like oh. we have a ship name. Shandis and Shandis is out there. So, <laughs> Shandis, that could also be our name, Sherry and Candace. Oh my That's gosh, it could Sorry, be. Sorry, John. But huge oh highlight, God. huge highlight. What did you learn? What, what, like, what was the coolest thing that you learned from that interview? That while he's putting out an album, he's like well into the next album, which is so weird to me. But uh, he did give me credit, by the way, for hooking him and Camila Cabello up because I've had them at so many events over the years together and it just never worked until now. But he finally gave me credit. So thank you, Sean. (laughs) You heard it here, people. (laughs) Right. That's right. Jeffrey, how about you? Well, the, on, on the last pod, I was backstage at Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. The whole vacation was amazing, much needed, fantastic. It was great to see so many people. I got to see our pal, Ashley Eckstein, which cool. was amazing. <laughs> she and her husband, David, are they are the nicest people in the whole world and had a great time with them. I got to see all the beautiful Christmas trees. <gasps> I saw your pictures. 80 of them. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of pictures. Are you judging my like over Instagramming here? <laughs> well, I just want to know if you found the tiny tree. Isn't there like the tiniest yeah. Christmas tree in the park oh. somewhere? Oh, you know what? There was a very tiny tree in the little Germany train setup. So maybe that's oh. the tiniest tree. I don't know. Cute. Maybe that is. I was really also impressed with all the health and safety protocols. They were terrific. The weather was mostly amazing, except when it was 37 degrees, <laughs> which I didn't think was a thing in Orlando, but it is. Good to know. <laughs> and of course, over Thanksgiving, I got to be with my niece, Dylan, and we watched a lot of Disney+. Plus. We watched Freaky Friday with our pal Heidi Blickenstaff. I watched <laughs> Bunked and Jesse, Candace. I'm nice. pretty sure you're familiar with those. I am. I used the plane rides very effectively to watch All Mandalorian, Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, The Disney holiday sing-along, and can we just talk about Pink and Willow for a minute? They were. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Mom goals. Mom goals. (laughs) (laughs) Get into those voice lessons starting stat. 
Yeah. We are on it. We're so on it. (laughs) I watched the wonderful world of Disney magical holiday celebration with our new friend, Derek Huff, which was so much fun. Great to see. It was like a, you know, fun greatest hits, but the the dance numbers with he and Julianne and in in Disneyland, it it totally made me so nostalgic for the parks. I love them so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course you can see those on Disney plus as well as Godmothered, which was wonderful charming a great holiday movie totally exceeded right? my expectations isn't isla fisher the best in that movie her physical comedy i just could not get over it amazing it's so good <laughs> amazing all of that on disney plus as well as coming up high school musical the musical the holiday special coming to Yay! disney plus and we have Two of the stars, Kate Reinders and Frankie Rodriguez, joining Ooh. us. They had very interesting stories to tell, including some some sneak peeks for season two. So very exciting. Coming up. Jeffrey, going back to your vacation really quick, I saw that you were eating quite quite the feast, especially of desserts and things. <laughs> tell oh. me more about it. What What were the highlights? What did you bring back for me? Oh, I totally brought back stuff for you, Sherry, but yeah, someone course. stole it. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, what? Someone stole it. Yeah, no. it was a a mouse. A mouse stole it. Oh, man. Um, hmm. Very sad. But I did get to eat a lot of things as I strolled around the 2020 Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Holidays, which is running now through the end of December. There were so many delicious things to eat yes speaking of desserts sherry i may have had one or two of the red velvet bunt mm. cakes oh yum i love oh my gosh velvet. and they did a spaceship earth salted caramel cookie um, those are both available in world Showplace. i also may have had a gingerbread man to wash it all mm. down with important to cleanse the palate with a gingerbread man <laughs> and those travel well, Jeffrey. So where are they? Yeah, what the heck? I know those travel well. <laughs> We're just going to make you feel guilty. The whole I didn't eat them on the plane just because I was desperate for more sugar. It's okay. I would do the same. <laughs> uh, there was a, a fantastic chipotle chicken tamale from Las Posadas Holiday Kitchen in, uh, near the Mexico Pavilion. The slow roasted turkey was stuffing in the trimmings at the American Adventure. Mm. Holiday pot pie, which was a plant-based delight with jackfruit, was incredible also from the American Holiday Table. The food was beyond. And my favorite potentially was the smoked salmon potato latke, which was a fabulous Mm. potato latke with a giant scoop of incredible smoked salmon on the top, which... I was at the Lechayim Holiday Kitchen. My mother was very happy. (laughs) There's so many other incredible things happening at the International Festival of the Holidays. There are these great character experiences that pop up all around. They promenade around World Showcase, Santa Claus, Elsa and Anna, Mickey and friends. That was great. It was such a fun, unique way to see the characters. And I saw them a lot. Like I probably saw them more than I normally see them in the parks. Cool. Incredible musical performances. The Voices of Liberty are performing at the America Gardens Theater, and their harmonies are so tight, so beautiful. Everything from Joy to the World to Let There Be Peace on Earth. It was incredibly moving. The R&B stylings of the very, very fabulous, joyful, also at the World Showplace Pavilion were Amazing. Mariachi Cobra is also performing at the America Gardens Theater. Yay! Uh, they were fantastic. Living with the Land has Merry and Bright Nights. We're in the evening. Living with the Land and the Land Pavilion has all of these incredible twinkling lights. And the merchandise, of course, Chip and Dale, two of my very favorites, are emblazoned upon many things that I now own. So that's <laughs> just a taste of a taste of Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. See it yourself if you were able to get to Walt Disney World. It was amazing. Wow. Oh, and uh, now I'm really hungry after talking about all the yummy food. I'm just always hungry. Welcome to my life. <laughs> well, I've got some more very merry news. The Disney Holiday Playlist is here. So now mm. from the comfort of your home, you can stream a specially curated playlist of Disney Holiday songs. Like some faves from Olaf's Frozen Adventure, 
music from the Disney parks, the Muppets, Di Capella, and more. Yes, perfect. Nice. It is curl up on the couch with Coco season, so this is what I will be listening to. It's available on most streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Vivo, and more. You cannot miss this playlist. I love that. I'm going to put the fireplace on the TV screen thing on while I listen yes. to that. That's my good thing. Nice. nice. <laughs> love that. Yes. Well, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but David Diggs, of course, from Broadway's Hamilton, premiered a new song called Puppy for Hanukkah. It premiered last week on Disney Channel. It's so cute, so funny. This is like a holiday Love hip-hop it. song. It's so good. Uh, there's a music video for it, too, which you guys can see on Disney Music Vivo's YouTube page. It's also going to be shown randomly on Disney Channel, and you'll see it in Disney stores nationwide this month. If you're doing a little shopping, it's basically what you want. People trying to rhyme things with Hanukkah is always the best this time of year. So <laughs> the line in the song is, you're my puppy for Hanukkah. I'm going to name you Monica, which is brilliant. Nice. So, Very clever. The Monica line, I nearly started crying with laughter. It was Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's so great. If you have kids, watch the video. It's adorable. Cute. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I have spent the majority of my year in exactly one spot in front of the TV. <laughs> and now I don't have to do it alone, at least virtually. Yay. Watch Party <laughs> on Hulu.com is here. With everyone practicing social distancing, Hulu is offering people the opportunity to enjoy some shared entertainment with their loved ones, no matter where they live, with Hulu Watch Party. So after launching Hulu Watch Party, you can share the link with up to seven other Hulu subscriber friends to join in on the fun. And while you're watching, you can react in real time through the chat function. You can control your own playback. I mean, honestly, no offense to some of my friends, but I think I'd prefer this <laughs> to being together in person for some people <laughs> who talk over the movie. <laughs> you can't talk over the golden girls that's all i know <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah there will be thousands of titles from hulu's on-demand streaming library available like the happiest season the hulu original film and holiday episodes of shows like this is us family guy and of course the golden girls amazing yeah, girl. yeah. amazing I'm, I'm in for the golden girls holiday episode let's do it <laughs> i don't know if i've seen that i need to tune in on hulu yeah well, coming up in 2021 will actually be Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary. Wow. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I did not know that it was founded in 1971, but of course we all know it was founded by Disney legend George Lucas. Mm -hmm. And starting in January, there is going to be a cool line of commemorative fan favorite merchandise that will be available celebrating the films and disney plus series so there's gonna be a lot more coming up in 2021 so visit lucasfilm.com or starwars.com for more information on that all right and we're gonna throw it to me in the sports center sports center okay guys espn and ABC have announced their <laughs> national television schedule for the first half of the 2021 NBA regular season. I'm not going to go into a ton of details, Jeffrey, but you will see a lot of the Los Angeles Lakers and my home team, the Dallas Mavericks. Of course, those two teams going to match up in prime time on Christmas Day. So I am excited. That's just one of five games scheduled with 13 hours of live coverage uh of course the nba finals rematch between the lakers and the miami heat everyone's excited for that you'll see that february 20th at 8 30 p.m and in addition espn is going to televise five nba preseason games starting friday december 11th as well as up to 44 nba playoff telecasts. this is all going to culminate with exclusive coverage of the 2021 western conference finals and nba finals so all ESPN and ABC NBA telecasts will be available to stream if you guys have the ESPN app. There you go. Woo, wow. basketball. <laughs> awesome. Well, actually, Candace, I've got some news for you. The Bachelor oh, premieres its landmark Woo. 25th season on Monday, January 4th. Which could also mm. be considered a sport, guys. Yes. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> Just for 
uh-huh. a sport I can get behind. So mm-hmm. Matt James, who we know and love from The Bachelorette, is taking on the role as the lead of his own love story for The Bachelor's 25th season, which, like I said, premieres January 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Episodes can be viewed the next day on demand and on Hulu. So what we know about this season so far, there will be a record-breaking 32 exceptional women from all over the country vying for an opportunity to meet the 28-year-old real estate broker, entrepreneur, and community organizer. My favorite part of The Bachelor is when the contestants arrive and seeing what they've planned for their <laughs> for their grand entrance. This season, someone's arriving in a gold Bentley, only yes. to be upstaged by another woman being carried in on a throne like Cleopatra wearing a gold crown. I think he's going to probably like the girl with the Bentley. Just a guess. Just a guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, if you had to make an entrance to The Bachelor Mansion, what would what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably come in via, via helicopter and probably bungee Ooh. down to the mansion. Oh, Ooh. that oh, is nice. intense. What about you, Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey would probably take the Skyliner into the mansion. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Candace. Oh, oh my absolutely. gosh! Absolutely, I am. I am on. I've that known you for long enough now. You have, <laughs> Candace, for the win. All right. Well, we have to talk about New Year's Eve because we got a big announcement. Billy Porter is going to be joining Ryan Seacrest and Lucy Hale in Times Square for Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest 2021. I'm sure you guys watched last year, but Billy was the host for the New Orleans New Year's Eve celebration. Mm. It's all happening, of course, on ABC December 31st at 8 p.m. I'm excited, too, for Jesse James Decker. She's a country artist I love. She's going to be back for the second year as Powerball correspondent. So she'll be checking in on five randomly selected finalists across the country before they reveal the Powerball first millionaire of the year just after midnight. What a way to bring in the new year, right? Oh, here's a million dollars. (laughs) But it's going to be five and a half hours of performances. Uh, They'll give you some looks at New Year's Eve celebrations around the globe, as always. And we're still waiting on other hosts and performer announcements coming soon. So if you guys want to keep up with the news, go to newyearsrockandeve.com or you can follow them on socials and the hashtag rockandeve. Nice. Woo! Well, before you watch that on December 31st, we have five fantastic things to watch this weekend, courtesy of our friends at D23. Ooh, uh. (laughs) For complete details, visit d23.com. Candice, what do we have up first? Well, first up, Disney Channel's Holiday House Party. This is happening Friday, December 11th at 8 o'clock, of course, on Disney Channel. Miranda May from Bunked is hosting this one. There's a ton of Disney Channel stars. They're going to be doing, like, hilarious sketches, wacky characters. It's going to be really cute. So I'm looking forward to this. Also, let Dylan know, your niece, Jeffrey, Trevor Torgman, will be a part of the show. (laughs) And you can also watch it the next day on Disney Now. Wow. Very cool. Well, speaking of Dylan, one of her very favorite characters, Vanellope Von Schweetz, stars in Ralph Breaks the Internet, which will be new to Disney Plus on Friday, December 11th. So I'm going to have to be filling Dylan in on a whole bunch of stuff. So she is going to be tuned in all weekend. (laughs) Also on Friday, December 11th, so much good TV on Friday, December 11th, the holiday movie Snow Globe, starring Christina Milian, will be airing on Freeform. So definitely tune in to that where she plays a woman who is given a magical snow globe that transports her to a land where every day is Christmas. <gasps> Sherry, it sounds oh like. Oh my your gosh. Of what your- can go wrong? <laughs> 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 well, that's not all on Friday, December 11th, because on Hulu, it'll be the season premiere of Madagascar, a little wild. Alex, Marty, Melman, and Gloria continue their big adventures in New York city And they become babysitters for a new litter of tiny hedgehogs. Melman gets stuck in a fire truck and Alex is accidentally mistaken for a large house cat. So, you know, just (laughs) casual. I was going to say, I hate when that happens. happens. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, with my lifestyle, I could easily be mistaken for a large house cat. (laughs) And then last up for five fantastic things to watch this weekend 
is Toy Story That Time Forgot. The yes. incredible Pixar special will be airing Sunday, December 13th on Freeform. During a post-Christmas play date, Woody, Buzz, and the gang find themselves in some uncharted territory when the coolest set of action figures ever turns out to be delusional. <laughs> will Trixie <laughs> save the day? Will the gang make it back to Bonnie's room in one piece? Will this spark the start of my Toy Story special shorts and feature film marathon? <laughs> Probably. Oh, <most laughs> Don't likely. miss it. <laughs> oh. Well, let's get to our guests. It's just been a year since we met the wildly talented Wildcats of the real East High when High School Musical, the musical, the series debuted on Disney+. Plus. The meta musical had all the heart and humor of the original movies, including a phenomenally talented cast who are currently filming season two of the show and also completed a holly jolly holiday special, which debuts on Disney+, Plus on December 11th. We are lucky enough to have two of the show's stars with us today, Please welcome the incredible actors who play Miss Jen and Carlos, Kate Reinders, and Frankie Rodriguez. Hi! Hi. Welcome! Okay, we are all extremely excited for the holiday special. What can you tell us about it? We want all the details. And are you singing holiday songs as your characters or as yourselves? The holiday special is uh, just something that the cast are all involved in, and it is kind of like we're more ourselves than our characters and we're sharing our family traditions and things that we grew up doing and the songs that we're singing are for the most part traditional Christmas songs but we do have some uh, original ones which is pretty fun. Yeah we all tell well not necessarily secrets but you definitely get to know us better and yeah and then you can tell that we love each other and we're actually not acting. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry but if there aren't secrets forget it no you, you lost me completely <laughs> okay frankie we know that you're singing feliz navidad with joe kate you're performing what are you doing christmas eve with mark and together you guys sing that's christmas to me so how did you guys select those songs we did not select them for ourselves <laughs> <laughs> But that's actually why I think they're so perfect, because they were selected for us by the creator of the show, the showrunner, Tim Federley. And in a way, he almost knows us better than we know ourselves. And so I think they're perfect fits. What do you think, Frankie? No, I think it's great. I think all the songs that we all got assigned fit our personality and also our voice type and also the style of like music we would sing. Feliz Navidad was really fun because it was with Joe Serafini and this is like our first big duet together. So it's fun because it has like a little more of like a pop, almost like R&B flair to it. And then Ooh. That's Christmas to me is the more like, I don't know. It's a little it's more- It's one. So yeah. we're singing acapella, like we're Ooh. super good singers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then, yes, I have um, What Are You Doing New Year's Eve with Mark St. Cyr, and he hasn't actually sung in our show yet, so it's very exciting to show the world what a crooner he is. Hmm. Hmm. Well, speaking of the holidays, they are looking really different this year than ever before. What are you guys planning for your holidays? I think we're all sort of waiting, right? I mean, we have a couple weeks off of work, but I think we might all just sort of stick around and have holidays by ourselves. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I I think the safest and easiest thing to do is just to stay home and just watch some Christmas movies. And I love to order takeout, so definitely doing that. So. I think just like plant in here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll still make the Christmas cookies. It's just I will we'll probably eat them all myself. <laughs> no, That's no different that. at my house than any other year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you had been together for a while filming. What was that like? Did, like, did you have a high school musical, the musical, the series, the bubble, or <laughs> how'd that work? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, it kind of feels like Salt Lake City is a bubble in general. (laughs) uh, Mountains by mountains. Yeah, we've been together for the last few weeks and making sure that we're putting the show together as safely as possible and just putting everyone's health as the number one priority. So it's been fun to get to see everybody. And even though we're 
behind masks and face shields for most of the day. Uh, when the cameras do go up, it is nice to see everyone's face and just to feel how normal it feels. So that's been fun. Mm -hmm. You know, those Aww. sort of moments of normalcy that yeah. I, I think a lot of us cling to. Yeah. Are you guys binging any shows in your downtime? Because we've all been binging Disney Plus for the past few months. I'm just curious what you guys have been watching. A lot of reality television. I like to have like just noise on in the background. So I like to while I'm doing other stuff. So it's been a lot of reality just because you can click in and out and it's easy and you like can just follow the story because they really do live in flashbacks. So <laughs> you can get the gist of the storyline. <laughs> yeah. Anything on Disney Plus? Because when I'm watching High School Musical, the musical, the series, then I like skip over to something else once I'm done with that. But any Disney Plus shows you guys have been into? I have a three-year-old son, so Disney Plus is the best thing ever because <laughs> we've watched all, you know, everything. And we watch all the shorts, the Mater, Tall Tale. Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and then just all the first I mean, I love them. And some of them are so touching. And then his dad and I were just weeping on the couch. Like the, the Kit Bull one. Oh, that one's so good. Mm. Oh. I mean, oh, they're so good. So if you only have a little nugget of time, you can watch those. Otherwise, you know, just jump on in to, you know, Moana always. <laughs> yeah. Good call. A big comfort show for me on Disney Plus has been That's a Raven. Oh. Yes. yes. Oh. Favorite show on Disney Channel growing up. And so it's been nice to revisit it. It's still funny. It held up really well. So that's been a fun comfort show for me to binge. <laughs> I love that comfort show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is Disney Plus these days, like the comfort hug. <laughs> True. Yeah, and I love watching the old ones, you know, that I grew up with, realizing that I still know every word. <laughs> I mean, every word. We are all big Disney fans here. But Kate, you've been to Disney parks long before you joined the show. Can you talk a little bit about your love of all things Disney? Oh, yes. Well, I mean, I grew up loving Disney movies and wanting to sing all the princesses' songs. And I just always loved the parks because they are like walking into another world, you know? And of course, I was a theater kid, but the Disney parks are like, it is a set, you know? And it just you go right in there and, and you can be part of it. And I actually got married in Disney World. Wow. And so, I mean, I wasn't necessarily a princess, but I was wearing a wedding dress that was princessy. So I kind of checked a couple things off the list um, with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, not going to lie, we actually saw that from a little bit of Insta stalking. Oh. But everyone listening should follow you both on Instagram. You post such grade A content. <laughs> Before the world shut down in March, how had your lives changed after the show began airing? Well, obviously getting recognized at like Coffee Bean was the biggest kind of like, <laughs> oh, this, is, this is weird. But I think, yeah, just that's been the biggest change is just being able, like people know who you are and they feel like there's a connection already because they follow the show and they love the character. Yeah, that's been like the biggest change for me. Hmm. I would say the biggest change for me is, I guess, just a feeling of <laughs> security for me. <laughs> well, that too. Because Utah has been a great place to have a kid and we're in a house and we have space. And then thank goodness we were here when COVID hit because we weren't in our tiny New York apartment, you know, and we could go up into the mountains and he could run around. But yeah, I think, you know, we're lucky to be part of a new family and, and it was sort of our special thing before the world saw it. And I think that we still have that. I mean, I know that people have seen it now, so our family's expanded, but we still have our special little bubble here. Hmm. Not even COVID bubble, just like happy bubble. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, this season features the school putting on Beauty and the Beast. That was such a cool announcement to hear, by the way, guys. We're so excited. But why is this the right show for season two? I think it's the perfect show just because there's so many characters and we in our show have so many characters. So it's easy to like assign a character to someone so everyone can be featured in something. But I think it also, there is just something about the Beauty and the Beast music that is just very magical. And it's, I don't know, I, I think it was the perfect choice for it. Yeah, I mean, Beauty and the Beast is just one of the all time best movies and then it translates to stage so well 
but yeah, the kids really shine in the characters that they get to play. So I'm excited for everybody to see it because Miss Jen did cast it very well. <laughs> Ooh. Any, any casting secrets revealed yet? We cannot say. We cannot <laughs> say. Oh. Well, speaking of your characters, they both had budding romances with other people. Um, let's be clear. At the end of the first season, will we get to see those evolve this season? Yes. Yeah, 100%. And I'm so excited. And I think everyone else will be excited for sure. I don't know if we're allowed to say any more than that. But yes, <laughs> there are romance on Miss Penn's horizon. Ooh. That's fun. I mean, you you know, you guys were burning down the house, you know, in the finale or almost the finale. So <laughs> it's it about yeah. time. I mean, she deserves some loving, don't you think? Totally. 100%. Yes. Well, there's a big kickoff for the show at D23 Expo last year. I loved your number during the Disney Plus panel. Frankie, what was it like for you performing in a room of nearly 7,000 Disney fans? I mean, it was insane. I had never experienced anything like it, um, nor have I ever performed in front of that many people. So it was kind of crazy. And it was just also special, too, because that was the first kind of big press thing that we did, but it was special because my parents got to be there. So they got to go around and they got to see everything. And that was like the first time they really got to see up close kind of what I do. I don't know. It was amazing. I, I, I I loved that whole experience. And Kate, you were there too. Did you, did you have fun? Oh yeah. I had so much fun. And I was totally in the back watching the kids just weeping um, (laughs) and happiness. And I mean, it was the energy in that huge room with so many people was, um, it was insane. Oh, okay, guys. So we're going to let you pick one word to describe the other. Are you ready? Okay. Go. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> one? One word. Oh. Maybe two. Okay. Two max. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> There's so many. I I know. One, Frankie, it's not going to be good enough. <laughs> How about sing it? Would you? Would that be easier? Could you Ooh. just describe the other in song? Ooh. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, Frankie is sassy. Frankie is fun. Frankie <laughs> knows almost everything about everyone. You just ask him what's what, and he'll tell you the truth. But the truth of all is. Frankie's heart is anything but small. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Yay. That, that was amazing. amazing. <laughs> Frankie, no pressure. <laughs> like, literally, I, I don't know if I can rhyme like that. Okay, let me see. Mm, mm, mm. Kate is very bubbly. She is just the best. She is very sweet. She uh, never wears a vest. <laughs> <laughs> I really think we need to get Tim on the phone so that he can incorporate this into a number perhaps later in I season know. two. I know. Clearly we're songwriters. Clearly we are at the Josh and Olivia that they don't know they have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we we love to ask people who are Disney fans some of their Disney favorites. So, are you guys ready? We're, you got to pick favorites. You ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Favorite animated movie? Frankie, you first. Oh, Aladdin. Ooh. Okay. Oh, choice. <sighs> Little Mermaid. Aww. Aww. I mean, it, I just yeah. Now, forever and always. Cute. Okay. Yeah. Favorite Disney character. Okay. Kate, you go first this time. Oh, Mary Poppins. Ooh, a practically perfect answer. <laughs> Favorite Disney character. Oh, that is so hard. I, uh, I think right now it's just, it's Elsa just because she has the best songs right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is Elsa season. Okay. Favorite song. We'll go back to you first, Frankie. Favorite, Di- oh my gosh, that's so hard. I just made a Disney playlist the other day thinking it was going to be like five songs and it ended up being like 40. Uh, <laughs> I have to pick my favorite. Your favorite 40 songs, go. <laughs> I think the number one at that list is I Love Colors of the Wind. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Excellent. Um, I guess, well, I sing How Far I'll Go from Moana 
daily with Luke. So, I, I mean, I guess it's, that's got to be it because <laughs> I like live and breathe that song. It's a good one. <laughs> it is Little good. Little right? well. Oh, yeah. All right. Favorite live action movie. And you could also go into the Star Wars and Marvel oeuvres if you choose. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. I mean, mine. I, I'm so boring though because I'm gonna say it's Mary Poppins again, which is true. That's a great one. It's a classic. <laughs> um, I, I guess this is like classic, classic Disney. But the Freaky Friday, Lindsay Lohan. Yes. I can watch that whenever. <laughs> like I can watch it all day. <laughs> oh, but yes. you know what else I love? I love the Parent Trap. Oh, oh the Haley Mills one. The Haley yep. Mills one. Yes. Mm-hmm. With you on that one. Okay, favorite Disney parks attraction? Mm. Space Mountain. Yeah, it's Ooh. pretty good. I do, but I do love the castle. To, like, it's not really an attraction, but just like at night with the fireworks. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I think that counts. Definitely totally. counts. Okay, favorite parks snack. Oh, a Disneyland corn dog. There is nothing like a Disneyland mm. corn dog. That is what I've heard, but I've never had one. Oh, it's the best. You get a Disneyland corn dog, a bag of potato chips, and a Coke, and it is the best. Yeah. <laughs> From that red truck. Yes. yes. Well, I like the peanut brittle. Mm. I like oh. a brittle. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I love peanut brittle. All right, here's the tough one. We end every interview with this. Favorite Disney memory? Well, when I was a kid, my brother and I, my dad had a convention and they bought out Disneyland for the night. And my brother and I got to ride on Space Mountain over and over. (laughs) Not waiting. They just kept making it go. And (laughs) that's kind of the best memory ever. Because it was like Space Mountain was ours. Wow. Wow. Frankie, that's a, there's life goals there for Frankie being his favorite address. <laughs> oh my goodness. That definitely never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite uh, Disneyland memories is actually after D23, getting to go to Disneyland and California Adventure with the cast and just being able to like walk around and get on all the rides and just to be with them because they're a lot of fun to be around. So that's a good memory for me. Oh, Aww. fun. Well, thank you both for joining us. It was such a pleasure hearing you both sing about the other yeah. <laughs> off the cuff like that. I feel like we're really on to something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see the holiday special and season two and all the things. Exactly. Yeah, they're going to be really good, I think. These yeah. kids, I mean, you think you know how talented they are and then they blow you away again. Aww. It's true. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> I can't believe they sang for us. That was my favorite I part. Know. Oh, oh my gosh. So yes. So talented. Yes. <laughs> I'd be happy if they just sang for us all the time. Like my life would be complete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, thanks again for listening to D23 Inside Disney. Don't forget to like and share this episode wherever you listen or subscribe. And if you chat with us, hashtag D23 Inside Disney. And for all the latest Disney info, check out D23.com. We'll be back next week with more Disney news and a fantastic guest on an all-new episode of D23 Inside Inside Disney. Disney.